All right, I'm going to get started here because um, I only have 25 minutes for these sessions and I got a lot of content to pack in. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. And yeah, this is Sleep Better at Night, Dapper for Zero Trust Architectures. And hopefully no one will fall asleep during this session because I know it's after lunch. So, you know, I'll try and keep you a little bit awake with some demos. Uh, my name is Alice Gibbons. I am head of customer success at Diagrid. And if you haven't already, come check out our booth at AppDeveloperCon or at KubeCon. Um, we are working on a bunch of different products that work uh, around the Dapper project, which I'll be talking about today. So let's get started. I wanted to start off with a definition of zero trust security. I think a lot of people have heard of zero trust security, but the Department of Defense sums it up really nicely here. And they say that you know, zero trust security is essentially no actor, system, network, or service operating um, outside or within the security network um, can be trusted. So essentially, this is the idea that you need to verify everything um, within your security perimeter. Uh, and this is like, you know, whether this is a device, an application, a transaction, um, essentially, you need to verify and double check that what you are talking to or the thing that you are uh, making the connection with is secure. And I think this is a, there's, you can see this by this little picture up here. Um, we have our uh, happy little uh, hackers that have you know, made it inside the security perimeter. And our applications are, of course, our treasure. And you know, that security perimeter is effectively the thing that uh, you know, once you make it in already and you're using a network perimeter security, you have access to really everything within that network boundary. However, you know, using zero trust security principles, uh, you can see we have a few other little castles within that castle, uh, ensuring that once or if uh, you know you have a hacker or a bad actor that makes it inside your network, you are you know securing things at an even uh, higher level. Um, and I just wanted to set that stage here. But you know, this is App Developer Con. You guys are like, hey, this is App Developer Con. We're not supposed to be talking about networking, um, but that's why you know zero trust security is not just for infrastructure teams. Uh, and that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today. Zero trust security can be for developers as well. Um, and especially like this paradigm is becoming more and more of a less of like a best practice um, shift and more of like standards that really everyone uh, is looking to adopt. Okay, so I'm gonna use this application, and this is a distributed application, a distributed systems application, pretty standard one. It's a, what's called a pizza store. So, you know, we all like pizza, and we are, uh, we have a pizza store, and we are making, placing orders for pizzas. We are calling out to a couple different microservices in order to both make this pizza within the kitchen service, and then also deliver this pizza uh, with the delivery service. Fairly simple application here, and it does a number of things um, that are pretty common distributed apps. So it does service to service invocation between applications. It does uh, you know, asynchronous communication via a message broker. Um, it reaches out to a key value store and it has a little bit of a front end. Nothing too crazy, but this is what I'm gonna be used to illustrating these points uh, through this talk. So you know, taking a look at the network perimeter, we would typically have this, you know, this network perimeter outside the uh, entire system, and then everything inside that would be considered uh, secure, right? But you know, thinking about some of these zero trust uh, principles that I was that we're talking about, we're going to actually use that application perimeter and that application boundary as the thing that we want to, uh, you know, be verifying and, and checking, right? So every call out to my, you know, infrastructure layer or you know my other services, that's going to have to be checked and verified. So how do we do that? You know, how do we do that from the uh, application layer as a developer? And this is kind of, um, oh yeah, and sorry. And there's you know, a number of issues that this uh, brings with it from the development perspective. For instance, you know, I'm, a, I'm a software developer and I have to now think about how I'm encrypting my calls between apps using like certificate rotation. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> or I have to you know, expose my APIs to these front ends in a secure manner that's still following this zero trust model. Uh, or like I need an identity essentially that is life cycled with my applications. Um, how do I do all of these things um, while st like still staying in that zero trust security model? Um, or also, yeah, restricting applications, you know, which, restricting which apps can publish on a message broker. This is typically the idea of kind of the infrastructure teams, but you know, these zero trust principles bringing it into the app level makes it more of a developer responsibility. Um, and this is kind of where Dapper comes in. 
And there's been a lot of kind of discussion around Dapper today uh, at AppDeveloperCon, but what we wanted to talk about, I'm just going to give a quick overview. And it is a set of microservices or distributed systems APIs. And you know, it has a number of different capabilities within it. We're not going to dive super deep into all of those today. You can see some of these up here. So you can do things like build stateful workflows. You can access key value stores. Um, you can you know, use like the cryptography API to encrypt um, your, your applications, and you can use this from any language or runtime. So there are a number of uh, SDKs that work with Dapper or that are the uh, Dapper native, or you can literally use native HTTP and gRPC clients from within your application code in whatever language you're coding in. Um, and this is these are running um, as a sidecar, and you are calling out to the Dapper APIs uh, local, via localhost uh, from your applications. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the security aspects uh, that Dapper also brings. And I do did also want to call out that this is, although it's typically hosted on Kubernetes, uh, can be hosted on really any cloud or edge infrastructure. OK, so the first concept that I wanted to talk about was Dapper application identity. And this is really important and kind of intrinsic to Dapper itself. Uh, because what it is doing is it's giving every single application within your system an identity uh, that is a strongly attested cryptographic identity using spiffy IDs. And you can see um, the spiffy ID of this app application one at the top here. Um, and these are globally unique. And they have private keys that are aligned with each application replica. Um, they are used for a ton of different things within Dapper, specifically authorizing connections between your applications. But then you can also they add a lot of niceties for like adding various policies um, and scoping them as well. And then yeah, I did mention this as well, but Dapper does run as a sidecar within your uh, pod, so you can think of that kind of as a security boundary going forward here. Um, yeah, and then you know some of the some of the calls you know to these Dapper APIs that you would be making. For instance, there's a call here like this one would be you know to the invoke endpoint. So I'd want to invoke in this case my application app one, and maybe I want to call a method on that application. Um, you know, and that's kind of there's a number of these different kind of Dapper semantic uh, APIs that we would use from your code. So what does this look like in our pizza example, right? We have our two services. We have our pizza store and our kitchen service. And our pizza store, what it's going to do is it's like, hey, you know what? We got a pizza order delivery, or we got a pizza order coming in. We need to tell the kitchen service, uh, time to make a pizza. And what this is going to do is you can see our two spiffy IDs um, on, the, on the slide here. But this is going to make a post request to invoke the kitchen service at its prepare method. right? So it's going to call out to the other service to say, hey, you know, I want this uh, pizza to be prepared. And these spiffy identities take in two really key properties uh, of Dapper. And these are the trust domain and the namespace. And I think namespace is a fairly common uh, concept, especially in like Kubernetes land. But uh, trust domains are essentially an addition, uh, a Dapper addition that what they do is they kind of group trust relationships together. So say if you want to you know, ensure that pizza store and kitchen service are within um, that same kind of trusted relationship, you can put them with, with inside the same trust domain. Um, I did also want to call out that you know, Dapper does do built-in MTLS encryption um, by default. And that's just kind of a, a nice idea that it gives you there. OK, and then yeah, one other thing is there is the addition to add uh, API token authentication. So if I wanted to make this even more secure and kind of move that security boundary from uh, not even just within my pod, but even closer towards my application, I can add API token auth, which is going to uh, ensure that every call to the Dapper APIs is actually uh, requires a API token um, to be sent with it, you know, to ensure like nothing else really can, can call those APIs. So what is this? How do I configure? You know, how do I configure this? These zero trust capabilities I'm talking about. Well, we use our our favorite tool, YAML, and we have this configuration file here. And what I'm going to do essentially is I'm only going to allow the pizza store application to call the kitchen service. So you can kind of see on the right side here. This is my config file. Um, you know, and I'm denying all uh, invoke applications onto that uh, kitchen service except for the call from pizza store. So that's kind of what is, is showing up on the right here. You can, have, you can have these default deny policies that say, hey, you know, nothing can even call me except for this one specific method and this one specific HTTP verb in which I'm going to allow this case. So you know, of course, if I had another application, that is not going to be allowed um, uh, to call that. 
So let's see what that looks like in practice. And I'm just going to switch over to VS Code really quick. I'm realizing I can't hold the mic and do this, but. <laughs> Essentially, the, what you can, I can try this. What you can see is the kitchen service. I have the, my pizza store service, which is right here. And as mentioned in the slide, right, we are reaching out and calling that kitchen service application. So this is that prepare um, call. And this is a basic Java application. Um, it's actually using just REST template. So we're not even um, using the Dapper SDK or the Dapper client in this specific example. We're literally just using uh, REST template within Java. And you can see I'm calling kitchen service by providing that application ID, again, that spiffy identity that, da that Dapper gives you uh, within the header. And then I'm you know, calling, reaching out to, to prepare, and then this, um, this Dapper HTTP uh, variable is literally just like the local host uh, plus the port where Dapper is running on. And you can see kind of on the right here, I have that configuration file I was showing where you know, we are denying um, all applications calling the uh, kitchen service except for that pizza store app, right? So kind of that principal least privilege access that we want. Um, on the kitchen service side, we have another Java application. In this, in this case, um, you know, this prepare endpoint, I just wanted to call out that it exists. It's a real endpoint. <laughs> and essentially, if I flip over to um, my code or my um, uh, browser, you can see that this application is actually running. So, you know, here's my pizza store application. This is great. Um, this is just, I have port forwarded this. This is all running on Kubernetes. I port forwarded this to localhost. Um, and then what this is going to do, right, is it's going to run uh, this, this application. And you can see kind of events kind of coming in and being uh, displayed up within the UI here. So one of the events that's coming in is from the store service. That's the pizza store service. And then, you know, you can see that that kitchen store um, service is actually showing up as well. And then just to even uh, kind of prove my point further, if I head to my um, logs, on the top here I have my pizza store service, and on the bottom I have my kitchen, uh, kitchen service. Pizza store on the top, kitchen on the bottom. And you can see that I have, you know, I'm calling out to calling kitchen service at this localhost prepare, again, because Dapper is running as uh, a sidecar over localhost there. And then I get this um, event within my kitchen store service on the bottom there. So that's great. But what if I want to try some additional calls that might not be allowed based on my security policy? So if I head into, um, this is just a REST client that I'm going to use to kind of showcase this. But essentially what this is, is I'm going to uh, be making the calls that the pizza store makes to its sidecar. So, you know, here's my pizza store Dapper sidecar, and I, I can pretend that this is my pizza store app calling out to its sidecar. And this is the one that should be allowed, right? So if I hit this, you can see on the right that it's giving a 200 OK, so that's a good thing. And then, but, you know, if you remember my kitchen config, I'm only allowing this prepare and put method. So if I change this guy to a post, hard to do with one hand, you can run this through, and I'm actually going to get this error direct invoke call um, directly from Dapper itself. And this is going to say, hey, you know, this permission was denied explicitly, and it's going to tell me this, sp this spiffy ID, um, and it's going to say, hey, you know, we're not allowed to use these post verbs based on our security policy. And, you know, heading back into here, I'm not going to, um, yeah, okay. I should have cleared the logs here, but there was no new logs. There was no actual order that was heading into um, into that in that kitchen service. Um, additionally, the other thing I just wanted to show on the invocation side is we also can try another one. So you know we know that this we know that this order this put on the prepare uh, method is actually something that is allowed based on our policy. However, you know because we're allowing prepare on put. However, you know, I'm going to try this from the delivery service. So the delivery service is one, another one of our microservices. But if you remember from my policy, you know, I'm saying, hey, you know, I want to deny every single thing calling me except for, you know, this one pizza store service. Um, I'm going to send this request. And you can see I get another error direct invoke. Um, it's saying, hey, I failed to invoke the kitchen service specifically because my permission was denied. Um, based on these policies. So again, these policies just really allowing you to get super granular with your applications and allow you to add that like application level security onto uh, synchronous communication in this case. But you're like, okay, that's great. What about asynchronous communication or what about like infrastructure access? 
And this is kind of where I wanted to talk about some of the, the idea that Dapper has behind Dapper components. And so what a Dapper component is, is we already know we have our application and we already know that it is, uh, you know, reaching out to its Dapper sidecar over localhost. We also have um, what is called the Dapper component model. And this is used any single time that you want to access underlying infrastructure. And so we have maybe a key value store that we want to access in this case. Maybe it's Postgres. Maybe we don't care, right? Because Dapper gives you that abstraction to reach out to um, um, from your code that essentially allows you to um, like switch out the component at any point in time. So maybe it's Postgres today, but maybe it's Redis tomorrow. Um, the code actually doesn't change. And so um, what these component files look like is they're more YAML. <laughs> and you can see kind of my YAML, my fake little YAML component on the bottom here. But this would be the connection details of Postgres that would actually allow me allow my application code to reach out to Dapper and then Dapper to load that component with into that sidecar and ensure that I can reach out and connect to that underlying infrastructure layer. And then this, this abstraction also allows you to provide, again, a lot of niceties around security at the app level. Because what you can do is you can add uh, like component scoping in this case. And con component scoping allows you to uh, apply principal use privilege access to your infrastructure components at the application level, while of course, you know, still um, abiding by these namespace and trust domain boundaries that I've talked about. Of course, we still want to use network restriction as well. That's not like taking away from the fact that you need to like restrict your network, but um, it gives, giving you that additional option. Okay, so now, you know, we have our kitchen service that we've talked about, we have our pizza store we've talked about. In this case, we want kitchen service to tell pizza store, hey, you know, my pizza, I, I made the pizza. Pizza's done, um, you know, print out a message and tell the user that the pizza is done being made. And this is gonna be using asynchronous communication. So that we wanna use a message broker for this. And this is, you know, very common use case in distributed systems. Um, we have, we're using a different Dapper endpoint. In this case, it's the publish pub sub endpoint. Um, and you can kind of see on the bottom here, I'm calling out to the publish uh, URL, and I'm calling on the PubSub message broker, and then I'm publishing a message on to a topic, and in this case, my topic is named topic. So there's gonna, I'm gonna be saying topic a lot. Um, and again, a, as mentioned, right, this is using the component model, it doesn't really matter what infrastructure broker I'm using. So I have, you know, it could be SQS, it could be Azure Service Bus, it could be, you know, RabbitMQ, you choose your favorite cloud or your underlying message provider, that's fine. Um, but Dapper kind of takes care of that for you. And then, you know, on my pizza store side, I have this events endpoint that's going to be receiving those um, events and printing them out. So what does this look like in Dapper? I have this component file, and then you'll notice it has the infrastructure details of my Kafka pub sub in this case, because I'm using Kafka that's running on my Kubernetes cluster. But again, Kafka could really be running anywhere. You just are providing those connection details within that YAML configuration. Um, in this case, I have two scopes at the bottom here. And these scopes are really important because they tell Dapper, hey, only load this Dapper component file into these two application sidecars. So it's gonna only load them into Kitchen Service and Pizza Store. So if I have any other application calling it, maybe it's app two, maybe it's you know a bad actor, whatever, it's not even gonna be granted access to that underlying infrastructure layer because it won't even know it exists. Similarly, I can also add a, um, a list of allowed topics. So, you know, we're using a topic named topic, very original, but if I, you know, only want to lock down that topic to be allowed on that uh, message broker, I can also do that within my allowed topics list. You can see I can add this um, allowed topics line, which, you know, allows, which only um, allows kitchen service to publish on the topic um, topic. And then last but not least, the most granularly you can get is adding these protected topics, saying, hey, you know, I can only allow certain apps to publish and certain apps to subscribe. Of course, in this case, we want Kitchen Service to publish that message and then, you know, Pizza Store to um, subscribe there. And so that's kind of what I'm doing on the bottom there, which, you know, meaning, of course, if I have any other application that wants to publish on a message on that message broker, not only is it not even loading it, but, you know, it's not even gonna be able to um, publish or subscribe to uh, that broker. Okay, so let's see what that looks like from a demo perspective. I think I still have time. Um, yes, so I'm going to take a quick peek at the Pizza Kitchen service again. Again, this is the one that's actually publishing that message, right? So we wanna publish a message saying, hey, you know, my pizza has been made. Um, you know, take, hey, pizza store, like, um, and then pizza store will pick it up. 
and it's going to do this from this emit, uh, emit event method. And this is actually using the Dapper client, um, the SDK, the Java SDK in this case, and we are using that publish event uh, Dapper client, and we are providing it both the PubSub name, the PubSub topic, and the event. All of these details are uh, matching up with our Dapper component file, which is the same one I showed on the slides, but it's essentially this YAML um, configuration file on the right here, and it is named PubSub, as you can see, um, and then we are you know, only allowing topic, topic, um, and we're only allowing my kitchen service to publish on that topic, and then pizza store to subscribe on that topic as well. Um, oops. On the subscribing side, we have a pizza store, and essentially this is just listening on the events endpoint, on the events endpoint, and this is listening, this does use cloud events, I didn't mention that, but that's um, kind of just a, a nicety that Dapper gives you in terms of both observability as well as adding additional metadata properties within the headers. But essentially, it's, uh, it's listening on the events, uh, we're subscribing on the events endpoint, and you know it's just going to print out, hey, we received this cloud event uh, from the subscription. In this case, it's from the pizza um, or the kitchen store service. So let's test that out. Um, we are going to run one of these guys. So in this case, we're going to test this out by pretending we are the application, the uh, kitchen service application, and we're calling out to the kitchen services sidecar. And we're using this pub, pub publish, pub subtopic, the same one that um, we've been talking about. And this is going to, this should give me a 204 note content, which it did, yay. And then, you know, if I head back into my Dapper logs here, you can kind of see this is printing out um, emitting kitchen event, that's great. And then, you know, I receive this cloud event on the uh, pizza store service on the top, which is fantastic. So this is allowed based on our policy. But let's try something that isn't allowed. So if I head down um, to my next one, I'm gonna pretend that I am the delivery service in this case. I'm the delivery service and I'm reaching out to the delivery services Dapper sidecar. I'm calling the exact same endpoint, right? I'm calling publish, PubSub, topic, and I'm giving it, you know, everything else is correct um, except for the fact that I'm literally from the delivery services Dapper sidecar um, using that identity, essentially like spoofing its identity in this case. So I'm gonna uh, try this one, and you can see I get an error code that says, hey, PubSub not found. Because if you remember from my configuration, the delivery service isn't even in the picture, right? We're not even allowing this um, Kafka component to be even scoped to that delivery service. So it doesn't even get loaded by the delivery service's Dapper sidecar, meaning that it's not even going to um, publish anything. So you can head over to the logs. You can see there's no new logs there. It never even went um, to that kitchen service in the first place, which is what we want. Next, we have the kitchen service Dapper sidecar. So remember, kitchen service is a is allowed. We're allowing this one, um, but we want to publish on a topic that is disallowed. So this is on topic one. So topic should be allowed. Topic one should not be allowed in this case. I'm going to do this. Hit this um, send request, and we get this nice error, error message from Dapper with a nice error code that tells us, hey, you know, PubSub is forbidden in this case. We are not allowing topic topic one to even um, be created on this on this message broker. And Dapper does some nice things with automatic topic creation, and some message brokers do. So this is um, kind of a, a good fail safe. Um, but yeah, we get this Dapper PubSub for, forbidden message. Uh, which is what we want. And then kind of last example here, um, we have a the event from the subscriber. So, you know, as I mentioned, this is the um, kitchen store is publishing and then pizza store is subscribing. And then based on our config here, we are saying, hey, you know, I only want kitchen service to publish and pizza store to subscribe. Let's try uh, publishing as the subscriber, right? So for publishing as that pizza store service, uh, let's see what we're gonna get. And we also get this, hey, you know, PubSub is forbidden because, you know, this is the subscribing application that we've locked it down to. Um, again, just giving you super granular access into what you want your applications to do. This is also really nice from a platform team perspective. And we see, like, a ton of Dapper of people using... Uh, platform teams using Dapper because essentially they... Okay. Uh, because what they like to do is they like the component model um, and what they can do is they can actually create these components that I was talking about and then hand these over to the developer teams, allowing like developers who might not be as experienced with, uh, you know, some of these security ideas or these principal least privilege, um, like zero trust security ideas to actually, you know, 
leave that stuff still to the platform teams. Um, but kind of finishing off, the last thing I just wanted to kind of get to is like, you know, the bottom line here is that Dapper can improve, you know, your zero trust security posture um, just by uh, adhering to some of these kind of zero trust uh, principles, specifically in terms of, you know, asynchronous and synchronous communication. Um, and like, again, keeping that application identity uh, intrinsically within your application. And then that was pretty much it. Um, I think I have like... I think I'm, I'm done for time, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to come by the Diagrid booth. We are at K30 all week at KubeCon, as well as we have a booth out here at AppDeveloperCon. So thanks so much. <laughs>